All right. So we are officially in the second half of the semester with this today's class, second half of week eight. But as we get ready for our midterm week, which is week nine, to kind of stagger it with your other midterms, there's a few things we're working on today. Nothing is actually due today. Our proving ground was due last class, right? But if you haven't done that, you need to get that done before you can move on to work on assignment four. But what we're going to aim to get done today is to finish our black shape vector as an illustrator file. So that next class, all we have to do to finish assignment four is add color variations with layer styles. Also, next class, we, our group presentations will be happening within the class time. So we need to be aware of that. We're going to have some class time today to confer with your group, make sure you know what you're doing, what your slides are, who's going to be speaking when, and what order we're going to be going in for your group presentations. So looking at next week, on Monday, assignment four will be due, and you're actually required as one of your three midterm review portfolio, you're required to print one version of your logo, either the black version or the colored version. So we're going to be learning how to do that and printing by the end of that class or outside of class, but before Wednesday. And then two other artworks from the first half. So those could be your exercises. Those could be your assignments. They're all going to be printed 8 by 10 inches by at least 300 pixels per inch. Uh, you're going to be giving your group presentations. And we're going to be reviewing for the midterm exam which you can already see the topics for under assignments. But we'll be doing a student-led review of that based on those topics and, and what things you wish to review. All right. We don't have any digital honors students in this section, so we don't need to worry about what's in gray. And then a week from today, on October 23rd, that is when you'll take your midterm exam in class. It will just cover those topics that we review. It's just basic kind of digital art information you need to know. That is when your questions of the day are due from one to three. Like that's kind of your drop dead deadline for all of those. So you keep up. Remember question of the day three is about vector versus, versus raster graphics. It starts the unit we're currently in. And as we're learning to make vectors, that will help you understand. <laughs> Uh, their differences from pixel-based images all the more. It's also when the last chance to turn in all of your exercises, remember you can turn those in late, exercises one and two, we're going to do something called a self-assessment. And then we're going to be working on proving ground three in class that day. And proving ground three is a full class midterm gallery critique. Right? So all of that stuff is, is pretty a pretty big deal for your midterm grade and midterm grades are actually due submitted on October 21st so you'll see in the course now your grade is out of something like 35 points but after your midterm exam and once your presentations are graded it will be closer to 45 points almost 50 points because we're at the midpoint of the semester and then we'll start looking to our next assignment, which will use vector line art, but raster coloring to create a, uh, a themed full color spot illustration. So lots to do, but we are here right now. So before we start talking about preparing images to print, because we know one of those needs to be our logo, we want to make sure that we know how to make a clean black shape logo. So that's where we're going to pick up. These are our videos so far. We left off on having our refined sketch and bringing that in. Open it here. Bring it into an assignment four folder. This was my refined sketch. Remember, it is thinking in terms of black shapes, right? Not line art. So though your proving ground sketches might have been outlined, because that's this was my proving ground sketch, right? Your refined sketch needs to fill it in. I recommend doing it digitally, but needs to fill it in so that you understand where the edges of your intended black shapes will be. This is not a black and white logo. This is a black shape logo. So the only shapes will be black shapes. 
It's the most versatile of identity design. All right, because it can be inverted, it can be filled with a different ink other than black, and it will always read clearly. And remember, you don't want it to be reliant on really thin lines so that when it's really small, it's still perfectly clear, engaging, and versatile. Because vector files scale infinitely. So, if you are at that step where you have your sketch, it does not really matter what resolution the refined sketch is, as long as it, it doesn't matter if it's a JPEG or a PNG, as long as it is filled in with black shapes. Then we can open that file with Adobe Illustrator 2024. So it's our first time using this program. This is the one I had started working on the end of last class and in the videos, but when you bring it in initially, this is what it might look like. And this looks different than Photoshop, as I explained. So as a review, it looks different because you have this white rectangle behind everything as the default, and then a gray space around that, kind of like we used Photoshop when we were compositing, right? But in Illustrator, resolution doesn't matter. Everything's a vector. It's about, it's a plotting program, not a pixel program. So we need to be able to plot the anchor points to give us these black shapes. So to do that, we want to click on it and we want to hold down Option and Shift and that will lock its proportions and shrink it to fit on this white rectangle. This white rectangle is what is called the artboard. And the artboard only really matters when you save it out as an SVG format, which is a transferable, very old vector format called scalable vector graphic, because the SVG will only save information that is contained within the artboard. <laughs> the next step is to look at the layers. So you'll see it to the upper right as you're setting up your refined sketch in Adobe Illustrator. You click on layers and layers are organizational. So you'll see this little drop down arrow. This is new for layers and it will show us that there's a raster image. That's why it says image there in our vector program. How do we know it's a raster image? Because it says it's a raster image. When I select it, it just selects a box around it instead of selecting a vector path. And when I zoom in on it, I can see those pixels very clearly, right? A vector is going to look very different than that. Okay, what I want you to do is to double click on that layer and then dim your images. You can just do the 50% or maybe I'll even do a little bit more to 30%. This is called onion skinning and it should be familiar from things we've done in compositing before. And then we are going to lock it. The way you lock a layer, remember an organizational tool, and lock all the paths and images contained in that layer is by clicking next to the eyeball and you have a padlock. Okay, now because I only have one layer and it's locked, I'm not able to do anything. It'll give me that little, you can't do it icon next to whatever tool I'm using. So what I need to do is create a new layer, just like in Photoshop. I can go down and find the little host it symbol at the bottom of the layer window and click on it. And unlike Photoshop, the layers will have colors associated to them. These are not the colors of the eyeball. These are the colors of the vector anchors that you will plot. So we started with blue and now it's red. And so I'm going to plot these with red and I'm going to use the most basic tool that Illustrator was built around back in the early 90s. And this tool, even before Adobe owned it, this tool is called the pen tool. And it's a tool we haven't been allowed to use in Photoshop so far because it's not at all like a real pen. <laughs> so instead, this is a plotting tool. And you'll see from this little animation, this is how you use it. You click and move to plot two anchor points with a straight line between them. You click and drag to plot a curve between the anchor point you're plotting and the last anchor point that was plotted. So I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way to use this tool if you're just starting out. And that is what's called polygonal design. And that's to only use straights. So what did I show you with my last example? 
I showed you how to use the shape tool. It's underneath the pen tool because the shape tool is very, very similar to the vector shape tools in Photoshop that we use for exercise two. The problem with the shape tool is that you have to do a lot of work to modify these existing shapes. And that often includes using the pen tool. So instead of moving between multiple tools, I'm going to try to show it to you all with the pen tool today. Sometimes the shape tool is a great way to get started, but this is the, the direct way to control your anchor points and your paths. So let's get started. I'm going to click on the pen tool. First thing, when you make an anchor, these are the two properties that any path you create with those anchors can have. A fill and a stroke. The fill is like the colored paper that you're cutting out of, and the stroke is the outline. We want to actually use the pen tool with the defaults, which you can click right here to get them. And then we want to modify the defaults. So what are the defaults? The defaults are a white fill with a black outline, a black stroke. So if I make a quick shape with that, you can see how it's filling in. And now to see the stroke, you kind of have to zoom in. I can go to properties and change that so that the stroke size is really visible. But unlike a stroke as a layer style in Photoshop, the stroke always goes from the center out. And because of that, it's not something we want to use for our finished logos. But once we're finished with this, what we'll simply do is swap it so that it's a black shape. So when we're using the pen tool to trace our refined sketch, we don't want it to have all of the defaults because notice what happens. As I'm filling in, it starts covering up my sketch, filling it in with white. Instead, on this shortcut here, instead what we want is to click on the fill, that white square, and then click on this red slash, which means empty it out. We don't want any fill. That way we just get an outline stroke. Why? Because that will show us as we're tracing with the pen tool where our edges are. Okay. So how can we make this? I'm going to erase this one really quick and show you. I'll erase this one too and show you. Okay, so I'm going to set, click the pen tool and set the defaults to be an empty fill with a regular stroke path at just the default uh, one point stroke width, which is going to be really thin. And now I'm just going to pick a shape. And this time I'm going to pick, well, let's start with the wing, this shape. And I'm just going to click and move and do it all with straights, even though there's obvious curves here. I'm going to build it all with straights. The more practice you get, the fewer you'll need. Fewer anchor points. But this gives you complete control of them. And that's why I'm using my trackpad. That's why this is designed to use with the mouse. And I can modify my design a little bit. I'm going to bring the wing out a little bit there. And a little bit here. Now here's the important thing. This is what's called an open path. You see how it doesn't close and fill in. When I move to the anchor point I started with, I'll get a little circle next to the icon of the pen tool. That shows me that I'm closing the path. Incredibly important to close your paths. Otherwise, you'll get weird little edges at the edge of your vector paths that you're not able to control. So now that I close the path, you see that I'm no longer dragging out an anchor. Now I can simply swap it to see what that shape gives me. And under my layers, I can turn off my sketch to see what that vector looks like. And I can use my small selection tool, the white arrow, to click off of it to see. 
And, you know, that's not bad. The benefits of it are 